Hi everyone! Welcome to my Friday Night Curry Club. Welcome to my kitchen. I hope everybody's well. I hope everybody's excited. I hope everyone's looking forward to the weekend. Another Friday. My God, I don't know where the time is going, but it is going pretty quickly. Um, welcome, as I said. Um, we are doing another Friday Night Curry Club um, and we are going to be cooking a Corellan fish curry today. Um, it's super tasty and it's super quick to do as well, so I'm not going to take up a huge amount of your time this evening. Um, as always, please do let me know if you're watching, give me a little wave, tell me hello, let me know where you are tuning in from because it's just really interesting for me to know where you're coming from, where you're um, tuning in from rather. Um, and it's also really nice to know if you're cooking with me. I know a few of you have already sent some messages through to let me know whether you're cooking, you're not cooking, you're just watching. Um, and let me know what you're hoping to get out of today. And if you've got any questions as we go through um, the session, please do let me know. This is your time to pick my brains and try and get as much information out of me as possible. Um, as well as having fun and of course because it's Friday we're all going to have a little drink so I've got my Prosecco on the go here. I hope you've all bought a little glass of something to ease you into the cooking and ease you into the weekend as well. So where have we got um, you guys from? Please do start typing away and letting me know if you're cooking, where you're tuning in from and anything else you might want to say. Who have we got today? Hi, Maya from Dallas. Amazing to have you join us. I've got, got a lot of people from the States. I'm loving it. We're getting so many more people from the US, which is just incredible. Um, got Kevin from Arkansas. Hi, Donna. Kevin from Arkansas. Donna from Maine. Donna from Maine. Lovely to have you join California. us. Who's that from California? Anne. Anne from California. Hello. Suzanne from Central Florida. Suzanne from Florida, welcome. Linda from Arizona. Linda from Arizona, welcome, welcome, welcome. Lovely to have you. Kevin from Wolverhampton. We've got Kevin from Wolverhampton, my hometown. We've got, um, I might pronounce this wrong, Nikita from Kenya. Nikita from Kenya, welcome. Lovely to have you join us, thank you. And Florence from Kenya as well, gosh. Wow, we are stretching the globe today so it's wonderful to have you all join us as i said please keep those um little comments coming in as we go through the session today um as i said it is a really quick one so i'm not going to keep you all evening but i do hope you'll enjoy it and please do give me feedback at the end of the session let me know what you thought um because it's just good for me going forwards to um to just take that on board okay before we start, get your questions coming in, but I'm just going to talk you through what I've got going on here. But if you've got any questions before we begin, please do shout them out now and, and let me know. We'll go through them before we actually start cooking. So, Corellan fish curry from South India. It's all about those lovely South Indian flavours. Coconut, um, curry leaves, all of those sort of zingy flavours that, that is synonymous with South Indian cooking. Um, this obviously is a fish dish, so fish is a massive part of their diet. Um, I'm using cod loin today, so I've got some cod loin because it's nice and thick. Um, and I think on the, on the um, recipe I do say fish like monkfish, really nice meaty fish, halibut, anything like that is a great um, fish choice for this dish. But the reason that I wanted to choose this is not everybody is a fish fan so if you want to you can it's a great sauce that we're going to make and it does work really well with chicken if that's what you want to do but as um i as with all of my sessions i always do like to give you alternatives um, in terms of veggie options that you can um, choose instead so this is a really lovely one for those sort of quick um cook veg so things like peppers mushrooms um you could use you could use aubergine let it cook down a little bit longer 
Um, what else would work? Uh, paneer is really good for this one. Um, and any of those sort of um, sugar snap peas, anything like that, really nice and vibrant colors would work really well. Um, today I'm going to be using a few prawns as well, just because I wanted to add some of those in. So I've got a few prawns here as well as the fish. So we're gonna cook those um, in, in, the, in the sauce. Um, the other bits and pieces that I've got going on here, so we talked a little bit about those South Indian flavors. Um, I'm gonna be cooking this with some coconut oil um, because we're just carrying those flavors on through um, the dish. I've got my masala dumba, which if anybody wants me to talk through that, I can do, but I do it every week. So I've got my masala dumba here. Um, I've got some fresh tomatoes that we're using, some fresh coriander, and I've got these lovely long uh, banana shallots. Um, I've got my ginger, I've got my garlic, I've got my chilies, and I've also got some curry leaves. And I know curry leaves are really, really difficult to get hold of at the moment. Um, I can't get hold of any either. So these are curry leaves that I have used in the past, not used in the past, but um, whenever I've got any extra left over, I just pop them into a tub and put them in the fridge. So these are my own sort of frozen curry leaves. Um, I will mention, because a lot of people have said that they can't get curry leaves and what should they substitute the curry leaves for. If you can't get hold of curry leaves, just miss them out. Um, and then next time you cook it, you can use them if you can get hold of them. Um, if you can't get fresh curry leaves, we do sell on the website um, dried curry leaves and they are really, really good. So it's a really nice um, spice to have in your cupboard for these kinds of occasions when you haven't got any dried. So um, the, those are available on the website and also through the app as well. So just take a look. Okay, have we got any questions before so we start? We've got a few more people who have joined. We've got Mir from Devizes. Hi, Mir from Devizes. Welcome. I think you're a newbie. I'm not yes. sure if I've heard you. Lovely. Welcome. Oh, you went to university in Bath, so I know the area very well. <laughs> and then Thelma from Maryland. Hello, States. Thelma from Maryland. Lovely yeah. to have you join. So, are you professionally trained or are you self taught? <laughs> That's very kind of you. Um, I'm a little bit of, of both. So I started off the Harry Gotra, um, is or the brand, um, very much um, self-taught in that um, I, all I was doing was just sharing the knowledge that I've got that I picked up from my mum and family members and all of that kind of stuff. Now that's what I was sharing. But when I started it up, I got picked up by a, um, a restaurant in London um, and I ended up staying and training under their head chef for about three or four years. Um, and from that, it was, a, it was the first Michelin starred restaurant in the UK. Um, and I learned the craft a little bit more and a little bit more um, detailed if you like through through the chefs at the restaurant so i've done a little bit of both i hope that answers your question um we've got their username is brumwolf um who is from wolves but is now in west bromwich hello brumwolf they so said tomorrow i'm going to be cooking a mokani chicken tikka masala with garlic naan bread and gulab jamun um but they can only get fine semolina for the gulab jamun is that it should be all right for your gulab jamun. It should be. All I will say is, if you've never made gulab jamun before, they are pretty tricky. I don't know if you've made them before or haven't. Um, it's really, really important that the temperature of your oil is, um, is low enough for them to cook through, like all the way through, and brown beautifully on the outside. If your oil is too hot, they will get really dark on the outside and they'll stay raw in the middle. Um, and if your oil is not hot enough, they will soak up lots of oil and they'll start to crack on the outside. So they are really, really tricky to make, but I have absolute faith that you'll be able to do it. Um, get your temperature, the oil that you're frying your gulab jamun in, get it to about 150, between 150 and 160 degrees C. That is what you want. Um, and let them slowly, slowly cook and bubble away um, because that's where you'll get those lovely soft, soft gulab jamun. I hope it's really lovely. Um, when you do do all this cooking, please do take some snaps, take some pictures and share them with me through my app because I love to see what you're up to and what you're cooking. So it's great to see it. Okay, so, pardon? 
Oh yeah, and also you can share um, your pictures and bits and pieces with me on Instagram. Sorry, people are shouting at me from behind. Um, share them with me on Instagram, I'm on Facebook, I'm also on uh, Twitter. Wherever wherever you um, might be in the social media um, world, just Google Harry, just look for Harry Gotra. I'm under that name across all of my platforms. Okay, so are we ready to cook? Can I have a thumbs up? Let me know if you are ready to cook. And also let me know, there's not very many people who've said whether they're just watching or whether they're cooking or what they're doing. So please do let me know if you are going to cook. So first things first, um, I've talked about all the bits and pieces that I've got here. The only thing I didn't mention was my coconut um, milk, which I've got there and some coriander to um, serve the dish with. So first things first, what I'm going to do is I'm just gonna take my fish and um, I'm just gonna douse it in a little bit of turmeric and some salt. Now, when, um, in the past, I've always thought that this dousing fish and seafood in turmeric was always about a marinade. Um, and, and that's what I assumed it was all about. But actually, the reason that they, that a lot of um, Indian cooks do this, and actually they still do it in all the restaurants, the restaurants I've worked in, they still will, any seafood that comes in, they'll dash it in a little bit of turmeric. Um, I'm going to do it to my um, prawns as well. The reason that they do it, it sort of goes back to the um, pre sort of refrigeration and all of that kind of stuff. So the fish would come in um, from sea, from the sea, um, and they would put it a little bit of turmeric in. And that is really because of the properties that turmeric has. So it's antibacterial, it's antiviral, it, all of those things um, were the reason that you would always, whenever you cook seafood in the Indian world, you tend to put a little bit of turmeric on it just to make sure that anything that you don't want in there isn't there. So that's what I'm doing. And it's, it is literally just a tiny, tiny little dusting um, turmeric so that's my prawns and in the fish I've also added a little bit of salt because we're going to cook this if I was marinating this for a long time then I wouldn't season it with salt but we're going to be cooking it fairly soon so I'm just putting a little bit of salt on there I'm just gonna mix that through be very very gentle with your fish obviously it's very delicate um, and let me know, if you are using fish, let me know what kind of fish you're using. Are you using monkfish? I know a couple of people got in touch saying that they were going to use salmon because that's what they had and that's what they wanted to use. And that's absolutely fine. Obviously, salmon is a slightly more oily fish. Um, so it will have a different flavour as such. Say hello to um, Kushik. Pardon? Say hello to Kushik, Dar. Hi, Kushik. Lovely to have you join us. Welcome. Right, so that's all I'm doing. I've just put a little bit of turmeric, a little bit of salt in there, and that is just going to sit while I get all of my other bits and pieces ready. So that's the fish looking beautiful and golden. Yummy. Right, that's just going to be put to one side for the time being. Um, the only other thing that I have done got my oven on at 180 for the um, saffron pilau that we're going to do to have with this dish. Okay, so are we ready to cook? Is it okay to use hake? Uh, absolutely, it's okay to use hake. Hake can sometimes be a little bit thin. The reason that I've gone for a loin is because it's thicker and I've cut it into nice big chunks because what I don't want to happen is I don't want the fish to just sort of disintegrate into the sauce. I want to have nice big chunks of fish that I'm um, eating, enjoying once it's cooked. So um, that's that's the only reason um, that I would probably not go for a hake. But if you've got a nice big uh, chunky one, that's absolutely fine. Bronwyn from Papua New Guinea. Hi Bronwyn, welcome. Lovely to have you join me. From Papua New Guinea, I think that's the first visit we've had on the live stream, so welcome. Amazing. And then Robert's using cod loin and prawns as well. Debbie is not cooking tonight. Dave got away from her, but is cooking tomorrow. 
Are you going to be cooking this dish tomorrow, Debbie? Yeah. Love to know. Okay, so first things first, I'm just going to pop my um, gas on in a minute. Oh, see, there we go. There we go. Okay, I'm just going to put that on a really low heat. First thing that I want to do is just get a few little bits and pieces prepped. So I've got my um, coconut oil um, ready. Um, I actually, before we start, what I'm going to do is start to prep um, all the other bits that I need. So I've got some shallots here, which work really well with seafood and, and fish and that kind of thing. And we use shallots when we did our Malabar prawn. So I'm just going to slice these up nice and long. I do like these shallots. I think they're really lovely with any sort of seafoody style dish. So if you haven't prepped, I know some of you prep beforehand. I'm going to take it slowly. I have had a little bit of feedback that some people find it a little bit chaotic behind the scenes. So if you're cooking um, with me, sometimes you can find it a little bit tricky. So I'm going to take my time um, and hopefully you will be able to keep with me. For those of you who have prepped, sorry. Jim's asked, do you ever use a base sauce like the um, so the question is, do I ever use a base sauce like the BIR style of cooking? And my simple answer is no. Um, not, and you know, I, I have had this question a few times. Um, so I learned to cook really with my mum. Every dish that you start to cook is cooked for the purpose of that dish. There's no standard sauces or anything like that. Um, that is really for the restaurant world and the, the takeaways and all of that kind of stuff because they are catering to such a mass market um, and also they are catering to um, a huge menu a lot of the times. So that's why they tend to have these base sources that they can um, add and, and take things away from. Um, but no, when I cook, everything is always done from scratch from the beginning. Okay, so I've got my shallot there. I might put the other one in, but I'm not 100% sure. I'm also going to just slice up my garlic nice and thin, little slices, and just have them ready. Sue said, shallots prepped and no cut fingers in sight. Oh, well done, Sue. No fingers chopped. So Sue is one of our um, weekly attendees. And she's been having a bit of a tough time because she's cut her fingers the last few weeks. So I'm glad you haven't cut yourself, which is all good. Obviously, whenever you are using a knife, it's not about speed. It's about safety. So do be very, very careful with your knives when you're cooking. Okay, so I'm just slicing my garlic and I'm keeping it, I mean, I'm slicing it thinly, but I'm keeping it fairly chunky. I'm going to go over it to make it really... Um, small what's that okay you apparently you can't see there we go is that better so i've got my shallots i've got my garlic i'm just going to use my chilies i'm going to cut these up nice and long to go into this dish and we are going seeds and all so with a lot of these south indian dishes they are spicy they are supposed to be spicy but I will say again, as I do every week, whenever you are cooking, you cook it to suit your palate. If you do not like your food hot or you, you know, it, it's not something that suits your family, then you reduce the amount of chilies you use. Um, if you like it spicier, you can always add more chilies. Now, with South Indian food, especially dishes like this, where you've got that coconut base or flavour, um, the coconut gives it sweetness. So it's that's why we tend to balance it with the heat from the chilli. But also South Indian food tends to be slightly hotter um, than North Indian food. So it's that sort of raw chilli. They do like that flavour. Someone's asked, does your spice didn't have a name? Is it common for Asian families to have one in the house? So my spice tin, it's a masala daba. Masala means spice, daba means box. So it's an Indian spice tin. And 
most Indian houses that cook will have a masala dabba like this. And the reason that is it holds all of your spices in one vessel, so it's much easier to cook rather than having to go through and find all your um, individual spices. Um, these are probably your seven key spices. There are a lot more spices. These are the seven key spices that you need. The reason that we hold them like this is spices are natural ingredients. They have natural oils within them. And whenever we cook with them, what we're trying to do is harness those natural oils because that is what gives our food the aromatics and the flavor that we're looking for. So the way you store your spices is very, very important. Um, these tins come, and I'll show you, they come with an internal lid which keeps everything airtight and in the dark, which is really important. And then you have a top that sits on top of them like that. So it's, it's a really nice little vessel that you can keep with all your spices in there. Um, and if you look on the app or if you look on um, the website itself and go into the shop area we sell these spice tins um, with all the seven key spices as well as um, a little spice that tells you about the spices that are in there and how you're supposed to use them so do take a look on the website you can sort of try and add a link as well to the end of this video if that helps okay so so far all I've done is I've got my shallots diced I've got my gin um, sorry my garlic I've got my chilies sliced and some ginger sliced as well. And I'm just going to keep nice and fine. And as you will see, I am keeping the skin on only because it's a real faff to peel it. But also, this is a nice fresh piece of ginger. Um, and the skin is not going to um, be too sort of harsh so I'm just slicing them really nice and thinly just as a julienne if that's what you want to call it but really nice and fine they do like their ginger down in the south um in south indian cooking so I'm going to keep that fairly do you know so the sauce for the turmeric on the side? do I know the, the sauce of it, the sauce of the turmeric on my website yeah. Um, I do. I'm going to have to double check. We have got those details so I can let you know if there's something specific. If you drop me an email um, just to make sure that I get back to you, if you just um, email me, I will come back to you and give you those, those details. Okay, so um, I've got all of my bits and pieces ready and I'm just going to heat up my pan, which is now warm. So a nice big spoonful of the coconut oil is going to go in first of all. And coconut oil is one of the, the good oils to use, but obviously it is still an oil, so you shouldn't go crazy with it. But it is it is a saturated oil, but it is plant-based, obviously. So it's a really nice oil to use. Okay, so oil's in the pan. First things we're going to do is we are going to pop in a nice big teaspoon of mustard seeds. Mustard seeds add a real sort of potency. And when you cook with mustard seeds whole, they will pop when they hit the oil and that's when they become potent. So do be careful because they might pop back at you. What spice do you use most often? What spice do I use most often? So a lot of Indian cooking, you tend to use cumin seeds. Cumin seeds are probably in most dishes. Um, turmeric I use and chilli I use quite a lot as well. So once your um, mustard seeds are in, they'll start to sizzle. Um, and that's when you know that they are doing what they need to do and releasing those lovely aromatics and oils. Into that in a minute, once they start to pop, and you'll hear them starting to pop, I'm going to put in my leaves when your curry leaves go in they will splutter so do be careful curry leaves go in and already I don't know if you can see you won't be able to see it because it's just going to go to the bottom of the pan but already it's getting really really lovely and aromatic so mustard seeds curry leaves go in 
careful, just turn your temperature down because you do not want your spices to burn. If you burn your spices at this stage, you need to throw them away and start again um, because there's nothing you can do to get rid of that bitter flavour. So as soon as they pop and they're ready, they're ready to go. So into that, I am going to add my shallots. I'm just going to make sure they break up a little bit. And I'm going to give that a little stir before I add any of the other fresh ingredients. That coconut oil is so aromatic. Oh, it's lovely. Now, all we want um, here, and I've probably mentioned this before. Now, whenever you're cooking an Indian dish, the way in which you cook your onions will sort of um, shape what that dish comes back looking like. So, when you are cooking a meat, we've done this a few times, it's all about getting a really deep, dark um, colour on those onions. And that is where your flavour and your depth will come from. So when you're cooking a meat dish, generally you want nice, dark, dark onions. When you're cooking a vegetable dish, you want the vegetables to sing for themselves. You want the dish to be lighter. So you only take your onions to a nice golden brown colour. When you're cooking a fish dish, a fish dish needs to be light um, in terms of the way that you're cooking your fish and so on. So you don't want a lot of fish in there. So all we're going to do is just take our onions until they're a nice sort of translucent colour just before they're starting to get a little bit of colour on them. So just stirring those in. Now they've all been coated. I'm now going to add the garlic. I'm going to pop my chilies in. Now when your chilies go in just remember that it can sometimes catch the back of your throat. So, what is the pan that you're using? so this is just a chef's pan. Um, when I cook fish dishes, I tend to like a fairly deep pan, but because it's a fish dish, I don't need a cast iron pan that's going to um, radiate that heat back in because the fish isn't gonna take much cooking. So a nice sort of chef's pan, Stainless steel um, pan is perfect. Now I will show you the inside of this because I'm going to try. And so that's what you are looking for, and already it should smell pretty, pretty tasty and pretty, pretty good. But I want the garlic to just mellow a little bit because we don't want that raw flavour of the garlic. So we're going to let that do its thing. Now, whilst that's cooking, I'm just going to get some other bits and pieces ready. So um, I've already seasoned the fish a little bit, so I'm not going to season the sauce until much later, in case, uh, just in case I don't want to add too much salt to it. Um, I'll taste it and then adjust as I need to. We've already also put a little bit of turmeric into the fish as well so we don't want to add too much but one of the things that um whenever i teach I, I i tend to go through this process of when you add your spices so your whole spices go in at the beginning and then your taste and color spices go in halfway through and then your much more sort of aromatic spices and, and herbs and things go in at the end um, the reason that your tasting colour spices go in halfway through is because once you've added your liquid, you can then put your tasting colour spices in, which are usually a powder. So those are things like your turmeric and your chilli powder, um, if you're using cumin powder, anything like that. And the reason you do that is because once you're halfway through, your liquid would have gone into the pan. And that just means that... Um, once your liquid goes in, you put your powdered spices in, they won't burn, they won't catch on the bottom of the pan. So with this dish, it's slightly different because um, although we are adding coconut, we're not gonna do that straight away. What I'm going to do, have I got a spoon? 
so with it, it depends on how much um, fish you've got. I think in the recipe I say five. So if you've got smaller ones, um, probably about five is, is going to be okay. So I'm going to put half a teaspoon of turmeric in a bowl. And then I'm going to add a tablespoon of my chilli powder. And this is my Kashmiri chilli powder. This is that lovely, beautiful, vibrant red chilli powder that I love. It gives great colour. It gives an amazing flavour. It's not overly spicy. It's not a, a, a hot chilli powder. Um, but it does have a real lovely smokiness to it. So I'm going to add a tablespoon of this. If you are a little bit worried that you think it will be too spicy, that just turn it down. Just don't add as much as I'm adding. So I'm roughly guessing this is about a tablespoon. There we go. And then into that, I'm going to add some water to make this into a paste. And what that will, what will happen there is it will prevent it from um, burning when it hits the pan. So I'm just going to add a little bit more water just to make it into a, a paste. It's so beautiful that those of you who have cooked with me before will know that I'm, I love my Kashmiri chilli powder. So lovely paste there, nice fairly thick paste, but that will just stop the spices from burning. So we're going to add those in. So I've got a little bit of colour now, um, and that's probably what we're looking for. So it's got a little bit of colour, but not a lot. They've gone translucent, so we're ready to go in with our... There we go. I'm ready to go in with my paste. Again, be careful. When you do this bit, it can catch the back of your throat. So we'll just add that paste in I'm just going to use my spoon so it can catch your throat but it can also make you sneeze a lot so just be careful okay I'm just going to scoop out the rest of it so that's what it's looking like. I haven't mixed it yet. I'm just going to stir to show you. Okay, now this is when it's going to catch your throat probably. But you, what you'll see is a beautiful, vibrant colour coming through. And now I can smell that lovely spice. Okay, so that's doing its thing. I'm just going to let that do what it needs to do. Any questions? Have we got any more questions whilst we are at this middle stage? smells really lovely it should smell really lovely in your kitchens I'm really hoping it does okay so my coconut so this is just a tin of coconut milk um, 400 mils or yeah 400 mils and it's Johnny, just mixed up said, it's like being in a war zone with these mustard seeds and then Janet has replied I use a large lid as a shield yep that's exactly what you need to do when you pop your mustard seeds in they will pop back out and when they hit you they hurt because they're hot so quite often as who was it that just said Janet, Janet just said what you need is a, is a is a shield and a saucepan lid is always a good way of doing that okay so this is smelling really nice now and it's just sort of just a tiny 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 bit just catching on the bottom of the pan now into that I'm going to add my coconut milk, that lovely, lovely creamy sweetness, this is where it comes from, so I'm just going to pour that in, and this is going to give you a really vibrant, ready orangey colour, 
And as you will have heard, so obviously when you are pouring in your coconut milk, the temperature in your pan is going to drop. So you might need to now just turn it up a little bit, not too high, you just want to get this to a nice simmer. Get the rest of that out. And give that a little stir. And essentially, this is it. This is your curry sauce done. Um, we need to bring this up to temperature. We just need to get that coconut warm through and just get those flavors amalgamating. I'm just taking some pictures so I can share them with you later. But this is what the color of my dish looks like. So it's that beautiful ready orange color and we've not added anything into that. There's no tomatoes. That's just purely from the Kashmiri chili powder. Okay, so that goes back on. I'm just going to let that sizzle for a few minutes. Okay, that's how simple it is and that is going to taste phenomenal, I promise you. Um, what I'm going to do is just get a couple of tomatoes and I'm just going to dice them up really nice and finely because I like to add these in um, just, just before I cook my fish. It gives it a little bit of a bite um, but it also gives it a little bit of tartness as well. So the way that a lot of um, South Indian curries you'd put a little bit of lemon in there at the end you can do this to this one, but with the tomatoes that I add at the end, it gives it that tart, tart flavour that we're looking for. So dice up your tomatoes really nice and finely. And then just pop them to one side so they're ready for later. Okay, so let me know, are you all with me? Thelma is allergic to tomatoes. Can she leave them out or what can she use to substitute? So Thelma, if you are allergic to tomatoes, just miss them out. What you can do if you want to, and this is again only if you want to, you can put a little squeeze of lemon in at the end and that will just give it a little bit of a, a zing. Um, but if you don't want to have that zing and you prefer it slightly with that creaminess, then by all means just miss the tomatoes out completely. You don't have to have them in there. Okay, so I'm using two tomatoes here, I think. If you like that tomato flavour, you can by all means add more. But I think it's just a nice way of adding a little bit of something different. So normally when you cook a curry, you tend to have a tomato-based curry. Um, and that goes into your masala. And that's what gives it that... I'm just going to pop that down there. That sort of... It's the base, isn't it? It tends to be the base. So this is quite nice in that we're using something a little bit different. We're using an ingredient in a slightly different way. So, just going to do this last one as well. So, are you all with me? If you're cooking, are you with me? Let me know. And if this is your first cook along, let me know your thoughts. It's always good to hear from you and hear what you think because it just helps me shape my sessions going forward. Okay, so that's two tomatoes. I'm going to include the... Okay. So is everybody still with me? I might have a little... A little pause and a little drink. Um, ideally for this recipe, I wouldn't use tin tomatoes. And the reason for that is that they're not going to give you the crunch and that um, the sharpness that you're looking for because I'm adding them not just to, it's not about becoming a base, it's about adding a little bit of um, 
a different slightly you don't want these tomatoes to cook down until they become part of that masala and that's what would happen with pin tomatoes okay so this is looking really lovely now yum it smells amazing let me know about the smells that are coming from your kitchen so that's my sauce that's done i'm not going to put my fish in yet because i'm going to start on the rice um, my fish and my prawns are going to sit there for a minute as are my tomatoes and I'm going to come back to this and finish it in a little while so I'm just going to pop it over to one side what we're going to do is just move on to our rice so I'm going to bring everything over and then I want you to tell me if you're ready to move on or if you want to hold fire for a minute so let me know if you are with me on the um, fish curry sauce, is that all good for you? If not, give me a shout. Right, okay. How are we doing? Have we heard any more? People are saying with you in spirit, all good so far. That sounds good. A Friday night glass of something. What are you drinking, guys? Are you on the red? Are you on a beer? I'm on my usual, my Prosecco. It makes me sound like an alcoholic. I don't usually drink through the week. I just enjoy my last one on a Friday. Okay, so to move on to the rice then. We've talked about rice before, um, and I've, I've told many people that I've cooked with that rice is probably the one thing I get asked the most about so what i've got in here oh it was on oops doesn't matter so what i've got in here is some rice um and all i've done is i've just washed it um and i wash it until the water runs clear so i um put about this much water in warmish water put my hand through it gets really um uh, murky I'll pour that away and I'll do it again. So I normally do that about four times. Um, and once it's, once it's been washed, and I say wash it until the water runs clear, so about four washes, um, that's, I'm just going to pop that into this bowl before we start to cook it. So this is a saffron or zafrani pilau. Um, and a pilau just means when you have cooked it with something in the same pan. So you can make it a pilau with anything. You could put vegetables in there, you could put mushrooms in, you could cook it with chicken and make a chicken pilau. You know, there's um, all kinds of things that you can do. But this is just a very simple saffron pilau. So my, um, in terms of the rice that I use, I tend to use a... Um, a long grain rice, um, I always go for basmati, um, so always go for the best quality basmati rice that you can. Okay, so there's my rice. In my pan, I'm going to, because we, we're, we're having a coconut dish, I'm going to just use a little bit of coconut oil, That's and into that I'm going to put only a little bit. Is the fish on a low heat? So the fish is off. I've just left my sauce off, completely off. I've just popped it to one side. Haven't put my fish in yet. I'm not going to do that at the minute because we're just going to focus on the rice. We'll do the rice, get the rice um, going, and then we're going to come back to finishing that fish dish off. Do you have to rinse brown just So I would always wash your rice, um, whether you're using brown or white just i would always recommend that you wash your rice okay so i've just put a little bit of coconut oil in if you haven't got if you don't want to use coconut oil you can just use a rapeseed oil whatever you might have um i'm going to turn that down what i've also got in here is some saffron okay and all i'm going to do is just put a little bit of water in there just to let the saffron the color of the saffron to start steeping out into into the um, into the water and we're going to use this later on but all you do is just put a little bit of warm water in there and you'll see the color starts to just come through 
so I'm just going to pop that to one side. So oil has gone in there. I'm going to add a teaspoon of cumin seeds. Put a little bit more in. So that's my cumin seeds gone in. Get a spoon. Just to give it a little stir. That's it. I hear someone's drinking Banks is mild. God, that takes me back. Okay, so your cumin seeds will be in the pan and you should be able to smell them. As soon as they release their aromatics and become, release those oils and you, you'll be able to smell them. As soon as that happens, you know you're ready to go in with your next ingredient. What we So I'm just gonna put some hot water, I'm just gonna turn around and put hot water straight into the pan. Now when you do this, be careful because you're mixing oil and water, so it can spit. So I'm just gonna get some hot, hot water and just pop that in. Now depending on the amount of rice you are cooking, if you are cooking one cup of rice, you need just under two cups of water and you wanna bring this back up to the boil. Um, so it's always twice the amount of water to rice, but with this dish you want slightly less than the, the, the double because we are going to add a few other ingredients into here that's going to add lots of flavour and lots of calories as well. So um, every now and again it's always nice to do something a little bit more decadent than you would normally. So once my water starts to come back up to the boil, I'm also going to add a little bit of salt into this normally season my rice but this one I do so a little bit of salt goes in and we let that come up to a boil and then into that we are going to add some yummy flavors and obviously by yummy I mean butter and by yummy I mean cream okay. so this is um, an a slightly different way of doing your rice but it's quite an interesting way of doing your rice but it does taste really nice it's a really um if you if you're having a dinner party it's a slightly different way of cooking your rice and it's quite nice to do it every now and again you wouldn't do this every time you have rice but every now and again it's quite nice to do it so my rice is boiling and um, sorry my water is boiling my rice is still here but my water is boiling into that i'm going to put a little knob of butter and I'm going to add a good drizzle of cream. Just until it goes all the way through, yum. Okay, and when it comes back up to temperature, that's when we add our rice. So it's boiling away, I'm going to add my rice in. Is everyone still with me? You don't think I've lost the plot? A lot. Of I'm not doing that to my rice. It's really nice. Okay, so I'm just gonna just out just to flatten the rice out. Now, normally when we cook rice, and for those of you who have cooked rice with me before, what I say is once it comes up to a boil, you take it right down to the lowest setting and you put your lid on and you let it cook for ten minutes. With this, it's slightly different. So what we're looking for is for this to start boiling and to a point where you start to get little dimples in the top, little holes in the top. Um, we're then gonna pop the lid on and we're gonna put it in the oven and bake it for about eight to 10 minutes, not very long, um, because it's gonna be pretty much cooked once, that, once it starts to um, boil over. Now, the reason that I said you want slightly less water than double the amount of water that we normally put in is because we've added that cream and that butter so that's made it up to the twice the amount in terms of volume I okay questions so we'll let this come to the boil and while I'm i answer those so the question is can you add coconut milk instead of cream absolutely you can add coconut cream instead of milk instead of the 
coconut cream instead of the cream. Um, that would just make it into a slightly more coconut flavour. Great side for this dish. So, yep, yeah, absolutely. Of course you can. And then someone said, I love your butter dish. Where have you got that from? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I've had this forever. Um, it's Zach. The brand is Zach. It's a German brand. Um, I think I've got this when we got married. And I've always had it. So it's not anything fancy. <laughs> Um, um, is it important to clean or wash your rice? So, it's really important to wash your rice um, because what that does is it gets rid of any excess starch. Um, rice also has trace elements of arsenic, which is always good to try and wash out. Um, it's a really good idea to wash your rice, and it also gets rid of. I mean, so rice is aged. Um, for however long so it's a good idea to just rinse it through but rinse it through until it runs clear that will also stop it becoming stodgy and soggy and horrible okay so this is what you're looking for you'll be able to see it so all of my water oh, practically gone and you've got little I did have little holes in the top so once you get to that stage, we're then going to pop the lid on and I'm going to put it into the oven and I'm going to bake that. So when you're cooking rice in the Indian, um, what you're aiming for is individual grains of rice. You don't want starch, you don't want um, sticky rice, you want individual grains of rice. Okay, so that is doing its thing. I'm going to pop my lid on. My oven is on at 180 already, so I'm going to put this in. And then someone said, I frequent a few Asian stores in Birmingham, but I've never seen saffron. Never seen saffron? Um, the reason that you won't see saffron on the shelf is because you have to ask for it behind the counter. So saffron is really, really expensive. So a little, little tub of saffron would probably cost about six or seven pounds um, you always have to ask them they keep it behind the counter because people will steal it so that's probably why you haven't seen it on the shelf as soon as you said that Dominique said the exact same thing so thank you Dominique for answering okay so my rice is in one thing I will say to you um, and I should have said at the beginning is um, when you put your pan in the oven, one, make sure it doesn't have any plastic handles or a plastic lid or anything. Um, two, when you get your pan out of the oven, it will be hot. Um, the number of sessions I've done with people and they've just gone and lifted the lid or gone and grabbed it out of the oven without realising because you your brain can't compute. It sees a handle and you go for it. So make sure you've got not wet dry tea towels that you or oven gloves that you're going to be getting it out of the oven with so please 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 do not burn yourself sue i'm to you i know we've had some knife injuries but i don't want you to burn yourself as well so please be careful okay so whilst my rice is cooking i'm going to go back to my fish i'm going to turn my um sauce back because we are now going to add our fish into this Cook it all the way through. Mmm, smells amazing. Right, I get rid of these bits. So I've got my fish. Now, when you are cooking fish, what you don't want to do is be really heavy handed with it because if you're heavy handed with it, it will just flake and break. Um, we want to very gently place this into a nice hot sauce. This is going to take a few minutes to cook. It's not going to need a lot of cooking. So, one thing I always say to people is, when you are cooking a dish like this, get your sauce ready and just have it to one side. And then just before you're about to eat it, that's when you add your fish in. Let it simmer, let it cook. It's going to take two or three minutes and then serve it straight away. Okay, so I'm just bringing this back up to temperature. Has everyone got their rice in the oven? Let me know. Let me know where you are. Dominique grows her own stuff. Yeah, I think you've told me that before, Dominique. We, um, I did try to grow some a few years ago. 
didn't really happen, but um, I bet it, I bet over in France it works quite nicely because you've got the sun, haven't you? Right, that's coming up to temperature. First thing I'm going to do is put in my tomatoes just because I want them to soften a little bit but not too much so the tomatoes go in a little bit more there and give that a stir it's looking good I am going to get my chopping board ready because I'm going to do some coriander in a minute as well. Got who? Hello Tamsin from Paris. I hope you are well. Lovely to have you join us. It's amazing. Right, give this a little rinse. I hope things are good in Paris. A beautiful city that you live in. Okay, so this is simmering a little bit. Now once those tomatoes go in, you'll see that you start to get a little bit of body to that, to that sauce, a little bit of texture, which is just what we're looking for. Yum. I hope you're hungry because this is going to be delicious. There we go. So once that comes back up to temperature, then we are going to add our fish into there. Now, if you're not a fish fan, as I said, you can use chicken um, in this dish and essentially just the same process. Your chicken will take a little bit longer to cook, whether you're using breast or thigh, whatever you might be using. So obviously bear that in mind. Um, but it's a really nice sauce to be doing with, um, with chicken because it will work. If anyone's cooking any veggie dishes, please do let me know as well because I'd love to know what you cook um, and what veg you opted for and, and also what you think of the final dish. That would be really helpful Someone as well. Okay, so just to repeat or just to go over how I made this sauce. Um, a little bit of coconut oil first of all um, and into that I added about a teaspoon of mustard seeds, black mustard seeds or brown mustard seeds work here. Um, some curry leaves go in and then into that I added two sliced um, shallots, um, sauteed those just until they went a little bit translucent and then into that some slices of um, garlic, some slices of ginger um, and uh, two sliced chilies went in as well. Once that sort of got a little bit of colour, not too much, we don't want them to go get a dark brown on there, just a little bit of colour. Um, I then added some turmeric and some chilli powder. I added about a tablespoon of chilli powder and half a teaspoon of turmeric into a bowl and I added some water just to make that into a paste. That then went in and that's where you get that vibrant beautiful colour from um, and then into that a can or a tin of coconut milk and then all of that comes together. Whilst that's cooking we then chopped up some tomatoes, nice and finely um, diced tomatoes. Um, those go in, they, the, the sauce just needs to come back up to temperature and then we add our fish which has been marinated in a little bit of turmeric and a little bit of salt. So that's going to go in now. Is everybody with me if you're cooking? So I'm just going to pop these in. Robert's doing a roast veg one and a fish one. Oh nice Robert, that sounds lovely. And then Martin has asked, is all saffron the same? You can get um, different grades of saffron. Um, you can also get a lot of saffron that isn't saffron, but they charge the prices of it. So you do need to be very careful. Um, make sure that it is saffron. You can get stuff that... Um, Someone's just said they left the pinch from three different brands, so it's in water, and only one of them was 100% saffron. Yeah, that, so you've got to be really careful with saffron. Um, it's not always what it should be okay so my fish has gone in 
And I'm going to turn it down. I don't want this to boil. I just want it to simmer. So I'm just going is to... Is there a Saffron substitute? Um, what you can do if you don't have a substitute. So Saffron isn't just about the colour. It does have a flavour as well. Um, so it's it's very difficult to substitute that for something. But if you are just wanting it for colour, then you could just put a little bit of turmeric in some um, in some water and... and, and and use that instead um, which would work in this case because we are using it for a little bit of color um, so just be aware of that so I've put my fish in I don't want to stir it too much because you can see those lovely big chunks of the fish I don't want to stir them and break them up I'm just going to let that simmer and cook through just for a minute or two and then I'm going to add my prawns because Obviously, the prawns are not going to take as much cooking. So that's looking good. I'll do that in a second. I'm just keeping an eye on my rice that's in there because I need to get that out in a sec. Yep. Any way of um, telling you if saffron is genuine? Oh. Is there any way of telling whether your saffron is genuine? It's really hard. It is really hard. Um, it is expensive. So if you find, I think go for a, a, a known brand is probably the best advice I can give you. But I'll look at, if you look at my saffron here, it's golden, golden, golden in its color. I don't actually like the taste of saffron. To me, it tastes like plastic bags, if that makes sense, but I, I'm not a keen saffron flavor person. But in the rice, it's quite nice, so. Okay. So, apparently, so f the, the, the flavor of a fake, fake saffron um, also tends to be a bit sweeter than or it is actually sweet as opposed to this stuff, which doesn't have that sweetness to it. Okay. Right, so my fish is nearly done. I'm going to pop my prawns in now as well, and I'm going to go and get my rice out of the oven. Right, just mix those prawns in. And as I said, this is not boiling. This is on a very gentle heat because I don't want to vigorously cook that fish until it breaks up so that's going in there and I'm going to now go and get my rice out I'm just going to switch these over so I can show you the rice and there we go so as I said please 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 get a nice dry tea towel or um, oven gloves do not burn yourself when you are getting your rice out of the oven. So, ow, 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 that's hot. So, when you get your rice out of the oven, leave your tea towel on the handle so you know it's hot. Next thing to do is get another tea towel and open the lid with another tea towel because you, obviously, this has been in the oven, it's gonna be hot. I, it might sound really silly, but I have seen people burn themselves so many times because your brain just does not compute that that's going to be hot. So, the rice, <gasps> yay. So the rice is slightly baked um, and it should be completely dry in terms of there shouldn't be any liquid in there. I'm just going to very quickly just double check. Yep, that's looking good. So into that, all we are going to do is with your saffron, very, very gently, we're just going to... Oh, hang on. Sorry, I didn't show you the rice, did I? So that is what my rice is looking like. Can you see? So you've got all of the cumin seeds in there and it's... no liquid no moisture in there so with the saffron all I'm going to do is just very carefully just drizzle just drizzle it round so that you've got a bit of 
colour going in there, not in one place, just drop it round, drizzle and then let it sit for a minute or two. Someone's asked, do you prefer Golgapa or Taripuri? <laughs> Golgapa all the way. I'm sorry, I, I, I love Golgapa. It is my absolute ultimate favourite. I can sit there and eat loads of them. Um, yeah, I'm definitely all about the Golgapa. Okay, so the saffron has gone in. I'll show you what it looks like. So that's what it's looking like at the moment. You see that lovely golden colour now that's drizzled through. So I'm just going to let that sit. Just have a quick look at my fish. That is pretty much done. Whilst that's just doing the last few bits, I'm going to slice up some coriander. This has been washed. I had a few people last week say, is it washed? It is washed. So I'm just going to slice up my it's coriander. Like Absolutely. Yeah. It looks very similar to how you would cook your biryani rice. That's right. Whoever said that? Who said that? Dominique. Dominique, you are spot on. Okay. Golgapir. Golgapir are Indian street food and they are little wheat balls um, that puff up and you make a hole in them with one finger. You make a hole in them and it becomes a little vessel and you fill that with a few spiced chickpeas or potatoes or whatever that might be. And then it's filled with, um, a, you put a little bit of sort of imli, which is ta tamarind, a, like a tamarind chutney. And then it's filled with a green liquid, which is a coriander and mint water. Um, so you've got this, you can imagine it's a ball and it's filled with this liquid and these spice things. You put the whole thing in your mouth and you bite down on it. And it's just like a flavour explosion. It's amazing. If you want to have a look at what they are, I have got some on the website with a recipe. Um, so have a look for Golgupe, G-O-L-G-U-P-P-A, Golgupe. They're amazing. Okay, so my fish is done. I'm going to turn that off. But before I show you that, so with your rice, this is what it looks like. Now with a fork, all you want to do is just very gently fork through it like that. And what you should end up with then is beautifully individual grains of rice with golden flecks running through look at that and have a taste they will take this rice is absolutely amazing so that oops I'm making a bit of a mess but that's what it looks like whoops there we go yum so I'm just going to have a little taste so this was one of the dishes I used to do in the restaurant um and I would always get in trouble for not seasoning my rice enough. So have a little taste. Mm. Yum. Okay. Remember that is hot. So I'm just going to pop that to one side. I'm just going to bring the fish over. Just to show you what mine looks like. So. That is the fish curry so you've got still got nice big chunky pieces of fish which are really important in this dish and I'm just going to finish that and as I said you can if you want to you can put a little bit of lemon juice in there um, I'm not going to but I'm just going to finish it off with a little bit of coriander going in a little bit of vibrancy is very very important I'll just bring this over and I will just plate this up for you. Just so you can have a look. Now the fish should 
be smelling amazing. So that's the, ooh. That's the rice gone in there. Now I'm going to add, I'm gonna put it in. You should have little flecks of saffron running through that rice as well. I'm just gonna pop that on here. I'm going to add my fish onto the top and I'm going to go for some nice big chunky, chunky bits, which... Lois is saying she's salivating. This is bringing back fond memories of the trip to Kerala last year. They were served a very similar dish on a banana leaf. Oh, hi Lois. We didn't say hello to you today. I'm sorry about that. It's lovely to have you join us again. I'm so glad this is bringing back memories. One of the, my favorite things about food is that is how something can invoke such amazing memories and food is just one of those amazing things that just takes you straight back to wherever it was in the world whoever you were with at that time and it just is so incredible now I've made a bit of a mess I'm just going to have a little wipe down before I present my dish presentation is so important when it comes to food so there you have it that is my Corellan fish curry made really really simply with some coconut milk a few key spices and some amazing prawns in there so that is my dish i hope you have enjoyed it i hope you um if you've cooked it i hope you um get to enjoy it later on um so there you go in under an hour we've made um two delightful dishes so I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, let me know how you guys are doing. Um, let me know if you have enjoyed the dish. What I always ask every week is that when you've cooked the dish, please do take a picture um, and share that with me. So share pictures of your whole experience and what you guys are going through when you are at home and you are cooking along with me live or if you're just watching please do share those with me and you can do that through instagram and you can do that through my app um, 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 um we will be cooking again next week again i'm not really sure what i'm doing so i will let you know when um when we know on probably on wednesday um, i will share the recipe with you and i will hopefully be able to cook or get you guys enthused enough to be able to cook with me um so that's it that's the end of the friday night curry club i hope you've enjoyed it um those of you i'm gonna say it again if you have cooked with me please take a picture and share either through instagram um what else twitter wherever you might be you know where to find me so um make sure that you take a picture and share it with me and i want to know what you thought of the dish as well so Thank you for joining. Always a joy to cook with you and 